Welcome to Brainish English Stories. Mrs. Fink went to visit Mrs. Cassidy's apartment one floor below. Isn't it amazing? said Mrs. Cassidy. She showed her face proudly to Mrs. Fink. One eye was almost closed, with a big, greenish purple bruise around it. Her lip was cut and bleeding a little, and there were red marks on each side of her neck. My husband would never think of doing that to me, said Mrs. Fink, hiding her envy. I wouldn't have a man, said Mrs. Cassidy, who didn't hit me at least once a week. It shows he cares about you. Say, but that last hit Jack gave me was not a light one. I can still see stars, but he'll be the nicest man in town for the rest of the week to make up for it. This eye is good for theater tickets and a silk shirt at the very least. I should hope, said Mrs. Fink, trying to be calm, that Mr. Fink is too much of a gentleman ever to hit me. Oh, come on, Maggie, said Mrs. Cassidy, laughing and putting which hazel on her bruise. You're just jealous. Your man is too cold and slow to ever hit you. He just sits down and reads the newspaper when he comes home. Isn't that right? Mr. Fink certainly reads the papers when he comes home, said Mrs. Fink, with a toss of her head. But he never uses me as a punching bag just for fun, that's for sure. Mrs. Cassidy laughed a happy laugh. She pulled down the collar of her robe and showed another bruise, maroon colored, etched with olive and orange, a bruise almost healed, but still special to her. Mrs. Fink gave in. The look in her eyes softened to envious admiration. She and Mrs. Cassidy had been friends in the downtown paper box factory before they got married, one year before. Now she and her husband lived in the apartment above Mame and her husband. So she couldn't act better than Mame. Doesn't it hurt when he hits you? asked Mrs. Fink, curious. Hurt? Mrs. Cassidy laughed with delight. Well, have you ever had a brick house fall on you? That's just how it feels like when they're digging you out of the ruins. Jack's left punch gets me theater tickets and a new pair of shoes, and his right punch that gets me a trip to Coney Island and six pairs of fancy silk stockings. But why does he hit you? asked Mrs. Fink with wide open eyes. Silly, said Mrs. Cassidy kindly. Why? Because he's drunk. It's usually on Saturday nights. But what reason do you give him? Mrs. Fink asked, wanting to know more. Why? Didn't I marry him? Jack comes home drunk, and I'm here, right? Who else should he hit? I'd like to see him try to hit someone else. Sometimes it's because dinner isn't ready, and sometimes it's because it is. Jack doesn't care about reasons. He just drinks until he remembers he's married. Then he comes home and hits me. On Saturday nights, I just move the furniture with sharp corners out of the way, so I won't hurt my head when he hits me. His left punch really shakes you up. Sometimes I fall down after the first hit, but when I want something nice during the week, I come back for more hits. That's what I did last night. Jack knows I've wanted a black silk shirt for a month, and I didn't think just one black I would get it. Tell you what, Mag, I bet you he brings it tonight. Mrs. Fink was thinking deeply. My Mart, she said, never hit me once in his life. It's just like you said, Mame. He comes home grouchy and doesn't say a word. He never takes me out anywhere. He just sits at home all the time. He buys me things, but he looks so sad about it that I never enjoy them. 
Mrs. Cassidy put an arm around her friend. You poor thing, she said. But not everyone can have a husband like Jack. Marriage wouldn't be so bad if all men were like him. Those unhappy wives you hear about, they need a man to come home and hit them once a week, then make up for it with kisses and chocolates. That would give them some excitement in life. What I want is a strong man who hits you when he's drunk and hugs you when he's not. Keep me away from the man who doesn't do either. Mrs. Fink sighed. The hallways suddenly filled with noise. The door flew open with a kick from Mr. Cassidy. His arms were full of packages. Mame ran and hugged him around the neck. Her good eyes sparkled with love. Hello, old girl, shouted Mr. Cassidy. He dropped his packages and lifted her off her feet in a big hug. I got tickets for Barnum and Bailey's, and if you open one of those packages, I think you'll find that silk shirt. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Fink. I didn't see you at first. How's old Mar doing? He's very well, Mr. Cassidy, thanks, said Mrs. Fink. I must be going up now. Mar'll be home for supper soon. I'll bring you that pattern you wanted tomorrow, Mame. Mrs. Fink went up to her apartment and had a little cry. It was a meaningless cry, the kind that only a woman knows about, a cry for no particular reason, an altogether silly cry, the most short and hopeless cry of all. Why had Martin never hit her? He was as big and strong as Jack Cassidy. Did he not care for her at all? He never argued. He came home and sat around, silent, sad, lazy. He was a fairly good provider, but he ignored the excitement of life. Mrs. Fink's dream was stuck. Her husband ranged between dessert and his hammock. If only he would get angry or stamp his foot now and then. And she had thought to sail so happily, visiting lovely places. But now, to change the figure, she was ready to give up, tired out, without any mark to show for all those boring rounds with her partner. For a moment, she almost hated Mame, Mame, with her cuts and bruises, her gifts and kisses, her wild ride with her fighting, brutal, loving husband. Mr. Fink came home at seven. He was full of the curse of staying home. Beyond his cozy home, he cared not to go, to go. He was the man who had caught the streetcar, the snake that had swallowed its prey, the tree that lay as it had fallen. Like this supper, Mart, asked Mrs. Fink, who had worked hard on it. Hmm, yep, grunted Mr. Fink. After supper, he gathered his newspapers to read. He sat in his stocking feet. Arise, some new writer, and tell me the right place in hell for the man who sits at home in his stocking feet. Sisters of patience who, by ties or duty, have endured it in silk, yarn, cotton, or wool. Does not the new song belong? The next day was Labor Day. Mr. Cassidy and Mr. Fink had the day off. Labor, triumphant, would parade and celebrate. Mrs. Fink took Mrs. Cassidy's pattern down early. Mame had on her new silk shirt. Even her hurt I managed to shine with a holiday gleam. Jack was sorry for what he did, and there was a fun plan for the day, with parks, picnics, and beer. A rising, jealous anger seized Mrs. Fink as she returned to her flat above. Oh, happy Mame, with her bruises and quick-following gifts. But was Mame to have all the happiness? Surely Martin Fink was as good a man as Jack Cassidy. 
Was his wife to go always unharmed and unloved? A sudden, brilliant idea came to Mrs. Fink. She would show Mame that there were husbands who could use their fists and perhaps be as kind afterward as any Jack. The holiday promised to be an ordinary one with the Finks. Mrs. Fink had the tubs in the kitchen filled with a two-week load of laundry that had been soaking overnight. Mr. Fink sat in his stocking feet, reading a newspaper. Thus, Labor Day was beginning. Jealousy surged high in Mrs. Fink's heart, and even higher surged a bold decision. If her man would not hit her, if he would not prove his manhood, his right, and his interest in their married life, he must be pushed to do his duty. Mr. Fink lit his pipe and peacefully rubbed an ankle with a stocking toe. He sat in the comfort of his marriage like a lump of fat in a pudding. This was his happy place to sit at ease, reading about the world in print, amid the splashing sounds of washing and the nice smells of meals past and meals to come. Many ideas were far from his mind, but the furthest one was the thought of hitting his wife. Mrs. Fink turned on the hot water and set the washboards in the suds. From the flat below came the happy laugh of Mrs. Cassidy. It sounded like a tease, showing off her own happiness to the unhit wife above. Now was Mrs. Fink's time. Suddenly, she turned angrily toward the man reading. You lazy bum, she cried. Must I work my arms off washing and working for the likes of you? Are you a man or are you a kitchen dog? Mr. Fink dropped his paper, stunned by surprise. She feared that he would not strike, that she had not done enough to make him mad. She jumped at him and hit him hard in the face with her fist. In that instant, she felt a thrill of love for him such as she had not felt in a long time. Rise up, Martin Fink, and come into your place. Oh, she must feel the weight of his hand now, just to show that he cared, just to show that he cared. Mr. Fink jumped to his feet. Maggie hit him again on the jaw with a wide swing of her other hand. She closed her eyes in that scary, happy moment before his blow should come. She whispered his name to herself. She leaned to the expected hit, longing for it. In the flat below, Mr. Cassidy, with a sorry and regretful face, was putting makeup on Mame's eye for their outing. From the flat above came the sound of a woman's voice, raised high, a bumping, a stumbling, a shuffling, a chair overturned, unmistakable sounds of a fight. Mart and Mag fighting, gasped Mr. Cassidy. Didn't know they ever did. Should I go up and see if they need help? One of Mrs. Cassidy's eyes sparkled like a diamond. The other twinkled at least like glass. Oh, oh, she said, softly and without apparent meaning, in the way women exclaim. I wonder if, wonder if. Wait, Jack, till I go up and see. Up the stairs, she sped. As her foot struck the hallway above, out from the kitchen door of her flat wildly ran Mrs. Fink. Oh, Maggie, cried Mrs. Cassidy in a delighted whisper. Did he? Oh, did he? Mrs. Fink ran and laid her face on her friend's shoulder and cried hopelessly. Mrs. Cassidy took Maggie's face between her hands and lifted it gently. Maggie's face was tear-stained, turning red and pale, but its smooth, pink and white, freckled surface was unscratched, unbruised, untouched by Mr. Fink's fist. Tell me, Maggie, pleaded Mame, or I'll go in there and find out. What was it? 
Did he hurt you? What did he do? Mrs. Fink's face went down again sadly on her friend's shoulder. For heaven's sake, don't open that door, Mame, she sobbed. And don't ever tell anyone, keep it a secret. He, he never touched me, and, oh, God, he's washing the clothes, he's washing the clothes.